Hi, welcome back to 3D Printed Soup. This week we're going to talk about how to take your miniatures from being trapped in a PLA prison to being released and looking as fantastic as they possibly can without snapping the arms and legs off. That's coming right up. Now when you first start 3D printing, you'll see loads and loads of examples on YouTube videos of people who've printed out uh, 3D printed uh, miniatures such as this one. What I don't show you is the horrible mess that you get when you first print it out. Uh, this one here, this is the same miniature, but basically this has not had the support material removed from it. Now you can generate custom supports which make it a lot easier to remove, but when you're first starting 3D printing, you're going to start using auto-generated supports to make sure the arms and legs don't snap off. Why do you use supports? Because, take the arms on this particular miniature, if you try to print that without support media, the print would get to about there fine, and then the arms would go split and just basically just turn into a mess of stringy spaghetti, because there's nothing connecting them to the base. 3D printers, well, FDM 3D printers, can't print stuff basically which doesn't have a connection to the base. So as soon as you get overhangs of over 50% or even 45%, you're going to start getting problems and the print won't come out as nicely as you want it to. So you ask your slicer software to spontaneously generate supports to make sure that it doesn't fall to pieces and make sure you don't get that, that stringy PLA nightmare. It does this by generating supports. As you can see here, you've got the miniature. Let's, uh, there we go. You've got the miniature, it's got her feet there and there, and in between, around the edge, you've got this material that uh, prints in sort of a honeycomb, which grows up from the uh, print bed, and just goes up and up and up until it reaches the parts which are overhanging, in this case the arms, and between the legs, and under the chest, where if it hangs over, it won't print properly. Now this stuff isn't actually attached to the miniature. There's tiny thin little pieces of plastic, like when you get a, um, say a Games Workshop or um, Airfix model. You have a sprue and there's tiny thin pieces of plastic attaching to the sprue, which you can snip off. Unfortunately, when it comes to uh, 3D printing miniatures like this, if you haven't created your own and it spontaneously generates it or automatically generates um, the support structure, it can get a little bit messy. So here is my guide from turning this into this without snapping the arms and legs off. Let's give this a try. Now that the model's finished, we'll have a quick look around it and see uh, how it's turned out. This sort of weird casing of support material um, totally encapsulates the bottom half of the miniature and we're going to have to basically tear that off to actually get rid of it. So you got um, the part in the front here which is supporting the chest and uh, you've got the pillars at the side, in the middle and on the other side as well but there's nothing on top. Um, there was nothing needing support sort of from the shoulders up, so that hasn't bothered printing. The only part you can see there is a bit on the neck, which is um, needed to make sure the chin doesn't move or the head didn't move. So let's break this away. Perfect, and we'll move that off. Now underneath you'll see this sort of honeycomb of uh, plastic it creates. Uh, this is so that um, it's not thick, it's not gonna basically bond to the figure at all. It's just purely there so you can remove it. And if you look at the back, you can also see where um, there's a little bit of support material around the top of the skull and uh, on all the uh, creases on her trousers. Now 
First thing you're gonna need if you're removing support material from an FDM print is what tools do you require? Um, I've got four or five different tools which is sort of my go-to thing for removing um, this sort of stuff, but you'll have stuff lying around the house that you can use, whether it's um, pliers and things like that, but this is the kind of tools that I prefer to use. First of all, a pair of needle-nosed tweezers, which are really good for sort of getting the uh, bits and pieces and getting, getting right into the cracks. Second thing I like to use is a pair of decent sharp cutters. Now if you've got an FDM printer you've probably got a pair of those free with it but just remember they're really really sharp so watch your fingers and make sure you don't cut yourself or stab yourself because they're, they're, they're sharp and they're pointy and if you don't do it right you're going to end up really mashing your hands up. So yeah safety first if anything sharp or pointy. Next on the list is a decent nail file. You don't want to use a metal file because this is plastic and you're going to damage it. So yeah, a decent cardboard nail file to get rid of any edges or flashing. Next up is a tool which I got with a set of acrylic nails I bought the wife. Um, I stole it after because it's fantastic. It's got a, sort of a, a wedged end at one side with the blade on it and on the other end it's got a sort of a spatula thing. So, and you can also use it for a file if you really need to get rid of some uh, properly uh, thick or uh, persistent PLA that basically won't go away with your, your cardboard file. And finally, one of the most important things you can get hold of, a pair of needle nose pliers. These are really good for sort of gripping hold of um, the flashing or the uh, support material, twisting and pulling, just making sure that uh, you've got a good grip on it when you're trying to remove it. Um, although you have to be very, very careful because these things do tend to snap the plastic if you're not careful. Right, now that we've got the tools, let's have a look at the model itself. See, this is fully encased in the uh, support material, which can be a real pain to get rid of. So uh, this is how I basically go about freeing a model up from its plastic prison. As I pointed out earlier, the support material itself is really quite rough. You can see sort of the lumps and bumps on it. Um, this is so basically it's thin and brittle, so you can use it to basically support the miniature, but it won't actually latch onto the miniature. So you can actually break bits of it fairly easily. Now either side you've got these uh, pillars of columns of support material. These are to support the hands on both sides. If you didn't have those, the hands wouldn't print properly. You've also got one on the front here which supports her chest and one on the neck that supports her head. So if you didn't have those, the thing would, would print really badly and ended up with spaghetti. So, first things first, let's start off with the neck. This should be fairly easy as it is separate from the rest of the miniature. Now, this should just come straight off, so I'm just going to grasp it with the sharp pliers and just get inside it and pop. And there you go, came straight off. No damage to the neck at all, and there you go, it's just a little piece of thin plastic, and now there you go, nice and smooth underneath. See the uh, support material hasn't affected it at all. Now next, we're going to remove this chest piece, just get in there, and there we are, just come straight off, and there we go, got her abdomen underneath there, and yeah, once again there's no damage to it, as the support material was just there for support, it wasn't actually connected to the miniature itself. And if we take a closer look at the miniature now, we've removed the fronting, you'll see that um, the finish is smooth and yeah, there's no damage to it at all whatsoever. We've just now got to remove this piece at the front so we can get to the legs. Now if you look underneath, there's sort of a honeycomb of plastic here. The support material isn't a solid lump, it's just purely very thin layers, so you should just be able to get straight in there. So. Let's cut this support material along the supports inside first. Some people would try and tear the whole thing out, but yeah, that's just going to cause no end of problems and you'll probably end up snapping the legs off and we don't want that. I mean, yeah, if you do snap anything off, it all glues back on again, but if you can get this out without snapping, it'd be much easier. And you see, we've cut the middle bits so there's no more connections. Now let's try cutting away the front. So one cut along the line here. And just twist carefully. It's not attached to the legs, so it shouldn't break those or shouldn't cause any problems. Then on the back here, we'll see if we can remove this back section. So 
just making little cuts and removing little bits at a time. If you try and tear the whole lot out, you're going to break it. So yeah, just cut little bits and just slowly remove it. Bit of patience here does wonders. With the last bit in the middle here. There you go, you've got a gap between both feet now. You can see where it's starting to uh, remove the material from the miniature. Okay, at the back there, you can see there's no swap material over the back, just this bit here. So I hope we should just pop. Yeah, there we go, it just pops straight off without a problem. And yeah, that has now just really started to come away. Okay, so we've snipped down the back the same as we did last time, and this should now just come straight off. And snip that. Carefully. Oh. And there we go. That is both legs are now clear. Only bits remaining are the bits which have supported the hands. Now the hands are going to be difficult because they have got fingers on them. And the fingers, from what I remember on this model, are very, very delicate. So I imagine I'm probably going to lose the fingers taking this off. Which is fine, you can replace those with uh, green stuff, we can glue the fingers back on, but yeah, with this particular model, if you're not printing on a resin printer, the fingers are probably going to snap. So, although going to this with a bit of positivity, let's see if we can't get this off without the fingers coming away with it. Right, okay, so, just carefully remove the little bits attaching it to the figure. This is all about patience, just very, very slowly moving and tearing little bits of plastic off without actually breaking it. But I think now I'm gonna try it freehand, just without using any tools, see if I can't waggle this free without having to worry about clippers. So yeah, that does seem like it might come. So I'm gonna give it a bit of a pull, see if this will come off without here we go. Oh god, I think we're going to lose some fingers here. Very carefully, very carefully. I can see the fingers bending. Don't come off. Okay, yep. There goes the support. And yep, we still have fingers attached to the model. They're going to need a little bit of a trim down, a little bit of a file, but yeah, those are still attached that's really really good news and uh, I thought I'll try the the, uh, the, the, the the next hand now and see if I can get that to work as well so yeah this is all about patience and just being very very careful okay yeah I can feel those snapping now yeah I don't think this is going to come off without with, with the same as the other ones did I can feel there's a bit too much movement in there and yeah yeah they're gone but let's see what happens when we pull this off. Hopefully the whole arm won't come off. Which is always a risk when you're <laughs> freeing uh, miniature from support material. That basically one of the arms is just going to snap clean off. Oh yeah, you can see the fingers are broken there. Uh, let's give it a pull and see what happens. Yeah, we've lost the ends of the fingers, but I'll either rescue those from the um, support material later and glue them on, or I'll drop it. Um, or I will, uh, I'll, I'll actually probably make some out of um, green stuff and just attach it on there. So yeah, that doesn't matter. The actual body itself is pretty much perfect apart from the uh, lumps and bumps which can be sanded down. But yeah, I'm very happy with the way that I got one hand out of that and say, well, I'll see if I can rescue those later. Okay, with most of the support removed, um, just sort of go around cleaning it up now. There's a few sort of lumps and bumps and a few little extra bits that need to be uh, removed from her before she's fully done. Okay, let's start with the bits on the jacket. There's a few little splatty bits that you can see at the bottom on the lapel. So let's get rid of that. Let's just cut that off. 
All this stuff will just basically come off very, very easily uh, with some snippers. Okay, there's quite a large lump there, so let's see if we can't remove that. Okay, yeah, that's actually <laughs> that's actually quite thick. So, uh, yeah, that's the main bit gone. I think we'll use the uh, sharp needle nose pliers to see if we can't get into uh, there in a moment. But no, I'm not going to cut it with that. If you look at the size of the tool compared to uh, the model itself, you can see how, how difficult it is to get to, to actually get to some of these pieces. I don't want to cut the top, I just want to remove the little extra piece of plastic there. I also don't want to cut my fingers off. Right, with most of the extra flashing and bits uh, removed, the only thing to do now is to uh, give her a quick sand and uh, just get a file on her and remove some of the excess sort of bits and pieces. So uh, yeah, I'm gonna do that now. I'm gonna start with the coat, just on the edge of the coat and just get rid of those lumps on there. This does take quite a while and just be patient with it. If you rush, you're gonna break bits or you're gonna basically scuff it and make it look bad. So just slowly sand it with a very, very, uh, non-abrasive uh, um, nail file, which is just designed purely for doing nails. You see, yeah, the detail on this has come out really, really quite well. I love the skull on the back of the jacket and all the straps on the legs. Yeah, with a little bit more of a clean up and a bit of a highlight, this thing's gonna look fantastic. Okay, so that's a basic guide on how to remove support material from a 3D printed miniature. Now, she came out really, really, really well. Very happy with the, uh, very happy with the uh, the arms, legs, abs, and face. Only issue I had was sadly that right hand lost a couple of fingers. All I'm going to do with that is I'll get some green stuff. I'll just make a tiny, tiny little um, curve of green stuff and just replace that on the hand and no one will ever know. And that's the thing you've got to know with FDM printing. Small parts are very, very brittle. And if you get very, very lucky, you'll be able to get all the arms, legs, hands, tentacles, teeth, whatever you're printing to come out beautifully. You just need to take the time and make sure you don't put any pressure on the model itself. Make sure all the cutting is done on the support material, never bending and twisting. So the arms, legs, tentacles, teeth, eyes pop off. As long as you're careful, you take your time, you'll be able to free it from the support material and your miniatures will stay looking absolutely fantastic. So thanks for watching 3D Printed Soup. I upload a video once a week, so don't forget to like, subscribe, and click the notification button so you know when I next upload. And you'll be able to get your miniatures from being covered in support material to looking lovely and free from their plastic prison. Thanks for watching, stay safe.